Howdy friends, hey JR Feeland here with South Jordan Horse Lessons. I got my pal Laredo here today with me, helping me with the video today. Today the video is going to be a list of 10 things about that are the unwritten rules of horsemanship. This is for sure not the all-inclusive list, but it was a, a good list that I thought I'd put together. And if you think of anything more, for sure add some uh, onto there too. But uh, let's start off. Okay, so the first rule that I uh, that when I'm putting on a saddle, this is uh, rule number one. When you're doing uh, cinches, the first rule I always thought about was do the front cinch first when you're putting the saddle on and flank cinch last. Okay, so why we do that is uh, so I'm going to grab the grab the front cinch here. The reason why this is done this way is because. We, well, I'll tell you here in a second. I'll kind of run through it here so you can see me doing it. Okay, so front cinch first. You can see here, and I actually uh, cinched it on pretty tight uh, at the first. And here's the reason why. The front cinch is what keeps you on the horse. The flank cinch is, uh, I had a, a buddy call it the O crap strap. This is in case something bad happens on the front, uh, front of the saddle, this is your backup for it. But not just a backup, right? It keeps your saddle in place, all that kind of stuff. But this is really the one that keeps you on the horse. So if you do the flank cinch first, what ends up happening is if your horse has a fit, that saddle will probably go off to the side and slide down off to the side and say goodbye to your saddle because it's going gonna, it's gonna to have some issues. So you come back here to do the flank cinch next. And this one, you do it snug but not tight. You can notice that I can even still maybe get some fingers in there a little bit, right? Snug but not tight. Another lesson you'll learn fast is if you do this one tight, your horse is gonna have a buck and fit. So, snug but not tight. This one goes on last, and this one goes on first. Now when you're taking a saddle off, it's the opposite. The first thing you do first is take off your flank cinch. Get that out of there, because if you take this off first, and then all of a sudden your horse has a fit, that saddle's only gonna be on there snug, and it's gonna fall off to the side, and you're gonna have an issue. Then you're ready to take off your front cinch. All right, and then you're ready to pull saddle. Well, you can see here I've got dangling cinches on the other side. So what I would actually do is go on the other side and hang those up onto the, uh, to the off side of the saddle. So there's my rule number one. Okay, the next rule is, did you notice how when I was putting on the cinches, I grabbed with my left hand. This is an unwritten rule in re, uh, horsemanship. And the reason why is because if you do it with your left hand, notice where your eyes are, right? Is you're looking back towards the hind end of that horse where he could really hurt you. And so the left hand protects you. If you go down here and do with your right hand, notice you don't even have an eyeball on these back legs here. And so if you're training a, you know, a younger horse or newer horse or whatever, you're, uh, you're asking for some punishment if you do it with the right hand. So there's my next rule of the unwritten rule of horsemanship. All right, now our next unwritten rule of horsemanship is what side do you get on? The side that, uh, that you should get on is on the left hand side. Now let me explain a little bit about this. You, you really should train your horse to be able to get on or off either side. I've been in mountain predicaments before where sometimes you need to get on on the right hand side because you're uphill and he's downhill and it's gnarly and you've got some steep, uh, steep cliffs or whatever, right? But generally the side is the left hand side that you get on and off on a horse. Let me explain why. We take a lot of our horsemanship techniques from the Romans. And the Romans always got on and off on the left hand side of the horse. And the reason why is because most humans are right-handed, and when they were, when they, as their soldiers, they would have their sword over here so they could draw their sword across like this. 
So the reason why they got on and off on the left hand side of a horse is because they didn't want to cross the sword across the horse's back. Okay, so because of that, that's the history of it, why the left side. But the other piece of it on the left hand side is because of that, we have that tradition in horsemanship. Everything is uh, put on and off on the left hand side of a horse. So when you undo your flank cinch first, that's on the left hand side. On the other side, you could certainly do it on the off billet side or whatever, but it's gonna hork around, it's gonna mess around with all the measurements and all that kind of stuff. Left side is the easy side. Then when you're ready to do your front cinch, everything here is on the left hand side. On the bridle and everything like that, bridle, if you have a throat latch or whatever, we're just riding in a traditional hackamore today. But if you had a, a bridle or whatever, the throat latch would be here on the left hand side too. So everything is on and off on the left hand side. Okay, so now when you're mounting, the next, it comes to the next roll. So left hand side is the next roll. But the other thing is, is when you're mounting, grab your reins uh, as you're getting up on the horse is the next rule, okay? So as you do your reins, notice what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually pick up my left rein just a little bit shorter than my right as I do this and get a little bit of a tip in the head of the horse. The reason why this is, is this is, and this is actually a 4-H uh, you know, requirement in some of the programs, is because if you horse does walk off, you can bend his head to the side, flex his neck, and be able to get control of your horse as you're getting up on the horse. Okay, so left hand side, grab a hold of your reins as you're getting up on. What I always like to do is kind of get up towards his shoulder here, make sure my left hand is there, and then swing up, kind of get from the shoulder piece instead of from behind like that. So, okay, those are the next rules. Get on on the left hand side and have a hold of your reins with a slight tip in that left rein as you go up so you can bend his head and flex his neck if the horse were to walk off. All right, friends, okay, now the next rule, the unwritten rule of horsemanship is never ride in front of the boss. So whoever, whoever, your, whoever the boss is, but I've ridden for a couple of outfits and, and it, was a, it was a thing of respect, but then there, there's other pieces of it too. Um, but the rule is don't ever ride in front of the boss. So the point of that is, is that the boss, he knows where you're going or she, he or she knows where you're going. And it's, uh, it's always easier when you're riding in a group of horses to be the one that's out front. The ones that are in the back, the horses always tend to kind of want to try to follow or whatever, all that kind of stuff, right? Not always a yes, right? But, uh, but that's always a tendency. And it's a thing of disrespect to ride in front of the boss. Okay, which now brings me to the next rule. Okay, I'll say, that, I'll say it this way. I, I've heard it said a few ways and I really like this way. I think it's kind of a funny one. If you have a friend that says to you, I'd like to race you back to the barn, that ain't no friend. Which brings me to the next rule. You never, never, never run back to the barn. You never run back to where the rest place is. So let me tell you kind of just in my little scenario here, we have this nice, beautiful arena where we do horse lessons, right? And uh, at the end of lessons, we uh, go over to this point right over here, this green fence. And then on the other side of this fence is where the saddling is and all that, the staging area. And so what we never, ever, ever do is go fast back to there. The reason why is the horse is naturally magnetized back there, right? And you, you entice them to build up what's that, that barn sour frenzy in the horse. So, so here's the rule, I guess, is, is as, you're, as you're going out on a trail or whatever, if you trot away from the barn, you must walk back to the barn. If you lope away from the barn, you can walk or trot back to the barn. And then if you do a full on, you know, gallop or run or whatever out uh, from the barn, you can walk, trot or lope back to the barn. You must walk, trot or lope back to the barn. So what we're trying to do is that barn sour is a lifetime uh, prevention on a horse to not let them take advantage of that barn sour instinct that they have. And it's not just an, you know, uh, uh, you know, barn sour, it's more than that. It's, 
it's the barn is where their safety and comfort is so imagine every bit of motivation that you have is all in one place and then all of a sudden you let a horse run back to there you're gonna get somebody hurt later on in life because that horse is gonna always have that habit of running back there so let me kind of demonstrate I guess so if you were out here doing a nice little trot or whatever you know You're working on doing some good stops. You're working on doing some good backups, getting his head down. You're working on some good yield the fronts, you know. Let's say you're even loping or whatever, right? Once it's time to head back to the barn or head back to where the rest is, you must go slower than what you are going. So as we go back to this, we're gonna go at a nice walk. Okay friends, now it brings us into our next rule. And the next unwritten rule of horsemanship is don't get too close to others especially don't get too close behind somebody in front of you okay so we we have this uh thing in horse lessons quite a bit and it's because we're all learning and all that kind of stuff right but let me give you a scenario right let's say you rush up to another horse right behind the horse and that lead horse kicks your horse kicks him in the front leg breaks his leg and you have to put your horse down whose fault is it I'll leave you a second to guess, but you really shouldn't have to guess. That is your fault. And the reason why is, is because you should have never let your horse rush up on another horse like that. It is common knowledge that a horse is going to kick, especially when startled, and especially from behind. So you, you would never, and I, I would say at least a horse length, you would never get behind somebody that close behind the rear end of a horse. So don't get too close. The other thing is, is um, you know, it's all cute to always ride with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever you got, right? And, and ride side by side and touch each other's hands and all that kind of stuff. But I would also say you have at least a little bit of distance. It, it's up to you on, on the distance there. But I've seen it where riders have hooked hook stirrups, hook boots, all that kind of stuff getting too close. And uh, it's going to basically pull both riders off, at least one rider off. As one horse goes faster than the other, it's going to pull you off. So there's the rule. Don't get too close. Okay, now the next one uh, rule that we're going to talk about is don't betray your horse. Okay, so what I, what I mean by that, right, is um, I guess I could probably write a whole book about not betraying your horse. But um, it, it leads, I guess, to the last one, too, that we're going to build up to. But... The betraying your horse is, is remember, this is a partnership between you and your horse. You have to be less of a predator and more of a partner, and your horse has to be less of a prey animal and more of a partner with you. And when you're partners, you just, you just don't betray each other. You're loyal to each other, right? And I'm not saying that you, um, you know, give in to everything, right? And, and just let the horse push you and, and be dominant over you. I'm not saying that either, right? A partnership is exactly that, where both of you are equally, equally respected, right? And so he or she, the horse, respects you and you respect them. So I guess let me give you some examples, I guess. Um, one of them, I guess, is with reins, right? Um, be better than a fence post with your reins. If you're asking for something with your horse to do something with your horse, let the pressure off uh, when the horse does it. So like, let's say uh, we've been working a lot on backups lately. So let's say we back up, he backs up, let the pressure off, right? Squeeze my boots, let the pressure off. Let the pressure off. Be better than what a fence post would be. So. If the fence post is asking him, the horse to pull back, right? When a horse gives in to the fence post, that rope on the fence post is gonna release, right? And so be, be as good as a fence post, I guess, is, is what I'm saying on betray. Don't betray a horse. Um, the other thing is, uh, I guess, uh, you know, as, you, as we move into this, I guess it moves into my last piece, is uh, respect, is an unwritten rule of horsemanship. Every good horseman I've known, horseman, horsewoman that I've known, 
uh, had a great respect for horses, had a great communication for horses. Um, that it was not one of uh, a mean relationship. It was one of care and speaking for the horse. And so I've heard it said one time that Ray Hunt, uh, somebody asked Ray Hunt, they said, why do you do this? And, uh, and his response was, um, I do it so that the horse has a better lot in life. And so um, respect, uh, respect your horse, respect those that are around you, um, respect what he learns, right? And give him a, a, a break when he's learned something, uh, give him a release of the pressure, right? And then come back the next day and look for your next 1% of improvement as you're training your horse. So, um, hey, I've hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this list. This is my list of 10 things of the unwritten laws of horsemanship, unwritten rules of horsemanship. If you have any different uh, rules, I would love to hear them. Comment below. Please like and subscribe the video. Um, love to have you turn on notifications too. We're going to have a bunch of more content coming out. And if you'd like more in-depth videos, come check out our website, southjordanhorselessons.com. And uh, we've got a bunch of videos on there that, uh, that you can get onto there. So um, hope you've enjoyed the list uh, and hope that was a good use to you. J.R. Phelan, signing out.